Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles. Brought to you by Sean Porter Promotions. The greatest song ever made. Live. Porter Way <laughs> intro song. Angeles. Or one of the greatest songs ever made. Ask somebody hit me up in the DMs. Hey, shout out to y'all being in the DMs. I try to, I literally try to get back to everybody, and that's a lot. <laughs> hey, the, the guy wanted to know could he put his, uh, him spitting on the first 10, 15 seconds? Who? Oh, ooh, uh, up, a, up, a, up a comer. Up uh, a comer. Like, uh, oh, like on the, on the, yeah, uh, yeah. He want to, he want to, he, he want a paid spot. I say, man, that's something we could probably <laughs> talk about. Oh no! If the money's right, hey, I'm about the money. I mean, come on now, hey. they, they trying to come up. Hey, How are they going to come up? Five hundred dollars, fifteen seconds. It makes sense for us. Do it make sense for him? Would it make sense yeah, for him? Yeah, and we'll put every, the name every week. We'll put the name. No different. No a different person. Oh, different. You only oh. get one show. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't care. Don't, I don't care if we feel like we're robbing him. I hey, Diddy robbed everybody. I got to run that by my guy though, right? Who's your guy? My guy. He's I mean, booked. I mean, if anything, can we get Royce? Oh, I'm about to say you the boss. Yeah. Give us some bars. I don't know. I think yeah, we're yeah. reaching with Royce. That that I think we have to break out the, the pocketbook. For that. Yeah, yeah. I think so we're reaching with Royce. That's a bit above the budget, right? We gotta now. get Royce on. I haven't had him on in a while. We got something coming up. So maybe I know what at, at the end of this show we'll we'll announce what we got coming up. We got some exciting announcements for I, you guys. I, I, we got a lot going on. So I'm like, this is like three weeks in a row now. I'm doing PSAs, public service announcements. I think I think you're fit for that. The Box Fan Expo. Cause I the oh, other side of there is before yeah. you go there, we gotta address the elephant in the room. The, uh, is not, the elephant that's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> elephant that's not in the room. <laughs> Hey, my used man to, Carson used to be a big ass dude my, over here. My man Carson's not here today. Hey, he's out at the. Do we got the picture somewhere? Uh, yeah, Car, if you look at right now, Carson's at the pool getting a Cowabunga. tan. Yeah, Kyle Bunga, Bunga Bay, Bay out here in Vegas, looking like Wu Tang, elephant in the sand. I you heard know? he post something and he was at Kyle Bunga Bay. I said, my only question was, does he is he wearing a shirt? It's <laughs> <laughs> my only question was, is he wearing a shirt? I've never seen Carson without a shirt on, and I don't. Hey, so, hey he got pictures on his. Facebook timeline when he was when he was uh yeah, oh, when he was a young was, guy yeah. yeah when he was young yeah, hey, we, hey. Should, we should bring those when up he was young and sexy. hey so you know how the fat dude wear the, wear the shirt to the uh, beach uh, there's a way around that you wear a surfing shirt that's how you do it yep See, hey so hey. I was getting down when we was in L A yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a purpose to that madness hey but shout out to Carson man he'll be here next week. Yeah, he's usually the quarterback. So I, I joked around that we went from Tom Brady to Jacoby Brissett. And I thought was, you were talking about no, me. I took no, it personal. No, 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 no. I like Jacoby, but I took it personal. I didn't actually. I, I just meant like there would just be an in, like just a normal quarterback. None of us are Jacoby Brissett. It's, we're just going to have to use the running game a lot and play hard defense. So, well, you went yeah. with a black quarterback. So I just. Oh, yeah. like, see, see, I, I don't even think See, everybody said I always went with race things. Yeah, I, I didn't want to like say it. it. I felt I like it was for it. me. I know, I know. It's just like, hadn't even crossed my mind. And That's since we there, true. looking forward to the Brown season. I know it's a lot going on out there in Cleveland right now with the oh. Browns organization. So Jacoby cool. Brousset is one of the quarterbacks over oh, there he now. Is? He is just to the point. And so I do. I look forward. And I to, forgot he was a Brown. Jacoby can, can. I forgot he was Brown. He can win. Shut, shut up. <laughs> he can win. And so I'm. I'm looking forward to uh, what's going to happen. With, with this whole quarterback thing over there with the Browns. Yeah. So, Jacoby you know what's more exciting win. than that upcoming? Yeah. Trey Lance. Yeah? Trey Area. Is, oh, is he out there yeah, at, yeah, yeah. with San oh, Francaign? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Y'all he's gave taking up over on, the job. Y'all gave up on my man. Hey, Jimmy G Strings, we love him. Jimmy, thank you. Is he gone? But it's time is for it, it to be over with. Hey, he's a real Italian. Yeah. yeah. Hey, when he look, gets yeah. serious, look, look, look. his mob side come yeah. out. We love Jimmy. We've seen all them bodies you buried in Lake Jimmy. Jimmy, you came close, but not quite. But we love you anyway. But you got to move on. I like Jimmy. Yeah. Dang. Is he gone? Yeah, he's about to be out of there. Yeah, no, I know he's like on the trade block yeah. or whatever now. So. Yeah, we, this is right. Porter Way NFL edition. Right. Listen, I like it. When we, yeah, I was going to say, when we get to the end of the show, we'll, you know, we'll kind of circle back to all that because what we got coming up for you guys is going to be a little different um, than what we've done before. It's going to be a lot of what we've done before, but also a little different. Let me get to these uh, announcements real quick. Again, the Box Fan Expo is the sixth. Uh, annual Box Fan Expo, September 17th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's at the Las Vegas Convention Center. We have an affiliate link, bit.ly forward slash the Porter Way. And you can order your tickets there. Um, beyond that, let me also circle back to the time. I will be working that night, Canelo versus Triple G 3. 
And so we will be there in the early part of the day. At 10 o'clock hours where we will begin our thing. And uh, I know for me, I'm, I'm definitely going to end up cutting out. But you guys, of course. Because are you working the yeah, telecast that night? I just you said know? that, Yes, Sean. I just made sure. I was <laughs> I was halfway in. Yeah. Half just, looking at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I will be working um, yep. that fight. So I will have to cut out early. These guys will probably be around. I don't You probably got some things that you got to do, too. So. You need to bring in our replacement? No, I keep them no on, replacements. I, keep them on I know standby. you always got somebody on standby. <laughs> I always got somebody on standby. No. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be me and Carson. Carson going to be there, man. It's going to be me. Right, find some standby. It's going to be me. Find, it's going to be me. Find somebody Damn. else. Get some others. Get some others. It's going to be me and Dane. Uh, last week, I announced that, that David Benavidez will be there. Egg Morales will be there. Jesse Vargas. And then the new announcement for uh, attendee uh, this week is two-time world champion Jose Ramirez. Mm. So um, more more fighters to announce. And if you guys have been there before, you know there's 20, 30, 40 plus fighters, legends, and current champions as well. So you guys uh, definitely need to uh, go to the website and get tickets for that September 17th. Um, the other announcement I got, we are, well, we, the Porter Way, Showtime, Sean Porter, pushing this Hall of Fame, the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. I'm trying to push it. Because I do believe that these guys, while they're being given their roses, they should be given their roses in front of hundreds and hundreds of people, not just not just the boxing world, but people outside of the, the boxing world. So I'm doing the best I can to push this. Want to encourage you guys to come out for this. It's the 10th annual gala weekend. It jumps off uh, August 26th and 27th. Um, the 26th is the meet and greet. It's the fan experience. That's 12 to 4. Uh, and then they have the, A Night with the Legends, which is at Red Tail. That's later on in, in the night. And then the 27th is, is the actual gala. Um, they have, they're going to start the day with 10 to 12 fights. 11 a.m. is the amateur boxing uh, show. It's called the Amateur Green Belt Challenge. So everybody's going to be fighting for WBC titles. Pretty cool for the young guys to, to be able to hold something like that. Oh, that sounds fun. Red carpet starts at five. It starts at five. Dinner starts at six, and hopefully this ceremony. This is a triple header here, so we're doing 2020, 20, 21, and twenty two. Just like uh, back in New York. Just like back, back in, in New York. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's gonna be a long one. Uh, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> Let's hopefully we did this this we get this in sync as much as possible. I want to announce the twenty twenty inductees uh, that you guys will be seeing if you're able to come out. Uh, also, go to nvbhof.com, and that's where you can get your tickets for the gala, August 26th and 27th. Let's see if we can if we can get these inductees up. All right, 2020 inductees, Clarence Bone Adams. Shout out to Bones, one of the best, you know, one of the underrated trainers in the game. Yeah. And does a lot of work out here in Vegas with a lot of champions. Mm -hmm. And even guys he doesn't actually train or, or is a second in the corner, a lot of these champions use his gym and Yep. So Bones has been big, not just for becoming a world champion in the ring, but for what he's done, helping other guys. Giving back. Yep. Yep. Giving back. Yep. Uh, El Feroz, Fernando Vargas. Woo. Uh oh. Okay. Y'all uh, know I'm a big fan of him. Him yeah. and Canelo, the youngest the whole family, the youngest champs at 154's history in that division's history. So SOG Andre Ward. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first Battle Hall of Famer, I believe. Oh, first, easy. Last uh, gold medalist from the United States yeah. in boxing. Uh, yeah. Hadn't lost a fight, like like Jim Lampley would always said, since he was 12. In the he on the goat first. list yet? He's huh? on the, did he make the goat list? He's on the goat list. Oh, yeah. I think uh, he's huh? on the he's on the short. When you're talking about who's the greatest 168-pound oh, yeah. he's on the short list okay. of guys that got to come up. Yeah. Okay. Asuma Nelson. Great fighter. Didn't yeah. lose. He, he, he went on such a run. He defended the featherweight title like a dozen times. And then he went up to 130 and 135. And he didn't lose between 1982 and 1991. He beat everybody. And he, 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 he had such longevity. He lost to Salvador Sanchez. Didn't lose. Defended the belt 12 times, something like that. And then moved up, became champ. Then he loses to Pernell Whitaker. So the only guys who beat him in his prime, well, <laughs> Salvador Sanchez and yeah, Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so. Man, that's yeah. that's impressive. Ghana, Ghana's right there. finest. I'm glad I got you on my yes. side. Oh yeah, he's yeah. been that. He's talking that talk right yeah. now. Yeah. Mark Too Sharp Johnson. Great How sharp fighter. was he? Oh, yeah. there's there's. <laughs> 
He was pound for pound top five in the nineties. You know, yeah. during during his prime, early two thousands, he was he was special. He got that shine belt. The IBF. Yep. Carlos Carlos Padilla. They he called it the shine belt. <laughs> Nice. Every time I see him, uh, I think. nothing for Carlos Padilla. We got Danny Lopez, Little Red, Danny Little Red, Coloradito. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let you do it. James lights out Tony. Forget it. Oh, come on, man. Come on. What you think about him, man? I just think he—he's one of those guys that he really lives that life outside the ring. But in the ring, he held it down. And middleweight, middleweight uh, to heavyweight, heavyweight. Yeah, he had a <laughs> hell of a run. And you saying right now, he still think he can do what he used to do 20 years ago. He did, and he, he probably will kill me if I say, what do you mean? I think every time I see him, I, I approach him slowly because <laughs> he just he he a physical dude. He an aggressive dude. <laughs> and if you come up him like, yeah, he going to grab you and put you on the headlock and all that kind of stuff. Shout out to James Tony. Great. You, what his best fight? Uh, you always remember him for probably Giroff. Vasily okay. Giroff at cruiserweight. Yeah, cruiserweight. He was in, he was dynamite at cruiserweight. Mm -hmm. he, yep. he really re got it back. Just quick, when during the Hall of Fame weekend, Sean was there when they put their hands into the plaster to be uh -huh. forever, you know, cemented in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Smitty is going well with James having one hand in the plaster. Maybe now we could finally crack his defense. And he goes. Like he said, nah. And while yeah. his hand was in the plaster, it's he put his wrong. shit in. <laughs> <laughs> we so. got uh, Jose Luis Castillo. Oh, okay. el, el Temible, not Terrible, Temible. Hey, if, that came closer than anyone ever to beating Floyd Mayweather in the pros. Wow. No one came as close as he did. He wow. was mean. He had like that, that combination. You have to be mean. You have to be able to box. And you have to be able to be aggressive against Floyd, just in, in my personal opinion, in terms of how you would beat So that's Floyd. what you was going to try to do. <laughs> I'm just that's saying. That's going to try to do. I'm just saying. <laughs> he had that intelligent pressure. <laughs> yeah. And great timing to make. If you were faster than him, he had the timing to make up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Julian Jackson. One of the greatest punchers of all time. Mm -hmm. well, he looked like one dude. Which one? Everybody, every, every black no, man. Michelle Ali Rivera. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you, yeah, man. Yeah. This dude here. It's racist, Sean. <laughs> no, nah, my dad had that same cut. Oh. <laughs> he did? Same cut. That's a Steve Harvey and my line. Dad, my dad had it beyond Fresh. The, uh, okay. the years of that dude. Okay, yeah. before Steve Harvey? My dad took that into the 2000s. <laughs> oh, I, I, I tell, let's send us a picture right now. I, Miguel Cotto. Come on. Miguel Cotto. I, I, I'm always about to go, Puerto Rico's only four-division champ, but then Amanda Serrano. Oh, yeah. So Puerto Rico's only male four division champion, Miguel Cotto. Greatest Puerto Rican fighter ever? I, I can't put him ahead of Tito Trinidad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Just can't. We also have Semi uh, Macias. Uh, no picture for him. We also have Lorenzo Fertita. Oh, my guy. Shout out to Lorenzo. You know, what y'all need me to say about Lorenzo? Lorenzo's a graduate of Bishop Gorman High School with the UNLV uh, family. You know, they own the Rockets, they own about. I would say 30 casinos here Shh. in Las Vegas. He did a lot for the community, gives back, uh, support all the programs. Mm -hmm. uh, great. Uh, they were once upon a time owners of the UFC as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. And sold it for a bag. Yep. A couple bags. A couple bags. And, couple and one bags. of the things that people don't know, him and Dana White are actually high school best friends. But Didn't they know that. grew up together. Mm. And when he got in that position to buy the UFC, he made his boy the CEO mm -hmm. and put him on. Mm-hmm. And walked nice. away with a bag. Yeah. So you better put, give me a bag. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm reading the undertones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also we have uh, late president of the WBC, Jose Suleiman. And, and oh, no, I thought you said yeah. something. So oh, no, no, no. Just, yeah. Dude. <laughs> so, Rest so, peace to Jose. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I, I know we, we took a little while to get through that. Well, there's, there's a lot. I, I didn't know if we should touch on what happened, them potentially, you know, raiding Jake Paul and people. Yeah. Uh, opinions on all of that and just, for what uh, for uh, Mauricio it had the fight have gone through, oh let's yeah, just yeah, let's yeah. We'll just wait on it later. yeah let's wait on yeah. again uh, nvbhof.com is where you can get your tickets everything goes down at Resorts World in the Barroom District so if you lost just look for the Barroom District and you'll see boxing and you'll know where you're at you'll see family so y'all make sure y'all come out for that again, August 26th and 27th. I know everything is in the description, so I won't say it anymore. All that being said, I do believe I'm done with the announcements. Okay. <laughs> so to like move a damn on. Secretary or something. So for me to do my best Carson work here, let's move on to the Showtime card okay. last night in Barclays Center, me. Brooklyn. You're what about the zone? The greatest city ever? No. no. In Brooklyn. 
We we didn't happen to catch the zone, so we're gonna head to. We got a lot to talk about. How dare you, Sean? Showtime had a lot of fights last night, but let's get to the main card. Hey, well, the guy to start with, Gary Antoine Russell, got the uh, stoppage Mm. in the sixth round. Yeah, you know, Ah. I I, I know, but I thought this when you guys were there with Carson when he fought Victor Postal had his had his first big step up test and won that fight by knockout. And um, you know, I said this uh, with, with 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 my man, the head of fight hype, Ben, and. He he kind of he has a lot of Sean Porter in him, Gary Antoine Russell. Hey, at when, he, when he threw pounds. that leaping right hook, I say, "Oh, that's Sean Porter." Like Paulie Malignaggi was having nightmares. Like, uh, is that fair, Paulie Malignaggi? No, the, oh, the, 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 we sat them. I believe we said that after uh, the last after his fight with with, with Victor Postal, right. and I I was sitting there while we were all watching the fight, and I was feeling like, in some ways, I'm looking at myself, and then I remember Carson kind of leaned in and said it to me, and I kind of like grinned because I was like. Feel like I all right. I'm not tripping. Yeah. Watching again last night, and I'm like, this dude fights a lot like me. This is pretty cool, you know. So you knew, I, that, you knew that leaping right was coming. No, uh, the, the one that knocked him down. Yeah, you did. Yeah, Damn. yeah. I knew. I knew it was gonna be that hook. That hook is 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 uh, that's kind of a a Russell family tradition. Like oh. they're 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 known for the hook. Okay. Um, that all that being said, I just kind of you know, I first of all. I thought he he handled the fight uh, superbly. I felt like he came out a little little wild and a little uh, a little. Um, I, I felt like he needed to calm down a little bit, and I, it only took a round for that to happen. Mm-hmm. He goes out the first round and does kind of. I think it's a mixture of what we trained along with the emotions of the moment, along with if I just touch him, I'm gonna knock him out, and like all of that happening in the first round comes back to the corner. You see. A instant change in the second round because they had saw what they needed to see and then they had a, mo- a, a opportunity to pull him back into okay you got that out of your out of your system now let's get to exactly how we need to work to get this guy out of there and I thought that I saw adjustments from that standpoint I felt like he he handled his energy correctly I felt like um Bartholomew, um, Bartholomew was like came to fight. He came to fight. <laughs> he looked great last night. That was a 180 from the Robert Easter fight. And what yes. I, because the difference, what I really liked about this fight specifically is you have to force Bartholomew to fight. He's not gonna just stand there and let his hands go. You're gonna you're gonna have to back him up and make him feel like he's gotta throw something. And of course, that's what uh what Antoine did all night. And but the on the other side of that was he was ready to fight. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if you, I didn't, the I didn't score we didn't have too many more opportunities coming, yeah. so he had at, to make At the it. knockdown, yeah. I had a 3-2 Bar, Bar Delamy or whatever his name is. I, I didn't score the fight, so. I, I thought, uh, I wasn't really, so I thought yeah. uh, Gary was winning the fight. Okay, yeah. okay. Until that point. But, I didn't yeah. score the fight. But then we get the knockout. Ooh. I don't know if we, if we had the knockdown. Okay, we, we, we get, the, right we hook. get the knockdown. Leaping right hook, and I was like, damn, yeah. when I watched it by myself. <laughs> Cause I I knew it was gonna be that punch in lens, and I was like, all right, this this shouldn't go much longer. Yeah, and then it didn't go any longer. He he fell face first, but I mean, my man got up. My man got up, and I don't I don't know. I mean, he, I, the, the guy's been reffing for thirteen years, so I can't looked it up. <laughs> yeah, no, they said they were they oh, were okay. going in on my guy. Okay. But it's, so it's not, <laughs> so it's it's hard for me to judge from the outside looking in. But I think a majority of us felt like felt like uh, <laughs> felt like it was it was an early stoppage. Like yeah, you, I think that's fair. You could my man's a, a former world champion. You got to give my man another shot, man. You got it. It's still early in the round. I mean, give him give him some time. Let's see what happens. I didn't see him stumble. I, he got up, moved to the left. The guy, the ref looked at him in his eyes, and I don't know what the hell did he. What are you looking for in that point? It, maybe his his eyes loopy. Maybe you seen something I didn't see. There, there he got nothing. up quickly, so his legs weren't completely underneath him once the ref yes. checked on him. So he did because he didn't take that eight count. He did get up right away at three to show he wasn't hurt. And he stood solid when he told him to stand there. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's something in the eyes. Yeah. Um. I, I'm I'm not gonna try to justify it. I didn't agree with it no. at all. He he. In my opinion, that is a really good referee. I've I've, I've watched him closely. He mm-hmm. he does a great job. I I don't know. I I don't know where his head was. I, I do wish that um, these commissions and these promoters would hold these um, officials accountable for for the questionable things. You know, mm-hmm. 
uh, it's questionable. So, like, explain to us what we saw, what we didn't see, or what you did see, so that we can be all be on the same page and and accept what just happened. Nobody could accept it. And then yeah. furthermore, you didn't give us anything to to help us yeah. accept it. You know what I mean? So I, I said, you know, obviously rooting for for the young for the young lad. I was I was hoping he was gonna have a, a supreme performance, and he and he was. I mean, he was in the action packed fight. It was back to it was back to back and forth. It was uh he was being challenged in some ways, and I thought the fight was going the way. Uh, a fighter at his of his caliber at this point in his career, it, it, it was going exactly how I I would hope it would go. Where you you're seeing some there's some questions presented to you, then you're able to answer some questions along the way. I thought the fight was going to continue. I thought we would have got a good chance to see what he would do, given he knocks a guy down, the guy of that level, and and what happens afterwards. We didn't get to see all that, so no lead to to really stress it anymore. Moving forward. We need to see more head movement from Antoine, um, and we need to see him uh, either the head movement and then also pivoting around or stepping around, getting off the line. There's a lot of him throwing punches and just kind of leaving his head there, and sometimes his head is, is actually erect with his hands down. So I think those are just some things that he can improve, should improve on, can improve on. And um, I knew we'd see a better version of him after Victor, and we'll see a better version of him after uh, Bartholomew Rancis, Rancis Bartholomew, because uh, they're working hard down there in DC. Yeah, because as you know, we're comparing him to you, and you got a little more wiggle, constant motion. Because as you moved on in your career and got better, like you just became more and more of this constant ball of motion. Mm -hmm. The feet, mm -hmm. the hands, yep. the upper, everything's moving at all times, yep. right? Yeah, and that's that's what you said. He'll need to improve on to take his style to the next level, and, yeah. and I, yeah, I agree. Um, actually, it was, it was. Go, yeah, go ahead. Let me say this because I'm not saying fight like me, but what I am saying is what I did was effective. It, you don't when you're moving your head, either you make the guy miss or you make him hesitate to throw his punch. You, you throw off his timing and his rhythm. If you're moving in general, this, those same things can happen. So I'm definitely not saying fight like me, and I'm and I'm actually I'm I'm, I'm humbled. To see that he boxes and and you guys are looking at him like he fights like you, I'm I'm just humbled that I actually I see that and I'm humbled that I don't think that they try to fight like Sean Porter at all. I think that he just has a style that's a lot like the style that I had and definitely how I got better. I tell people all the time like I'm a trash can of Sugar Shane Mosley, Muhammad Ali, um, Roy Jones Jr., uh, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. Okay, okay, okay. No, okay. But but what I'm saying is, I looked at all those guys and I and I tried to learn from them. You take little things from. I was trying to take things from them. So I got you. Like when you talk about the Sean Porter style, like you got to talk about other fighters. You can't just talk. I, if you tell me, if you tell me to show you my style, I'm going to show you my style. But then I'm going to show you, tell you to watch this. You guy. took all that, Sean, and yeah. made it your exactly. style. So then now, the next generation. Exactly. So and that's what the generation before that did. You watch? Yeah. Then. Yeah, well, well yeah. you know, last night, kind of like you would be at welterweight sometimes, he actually looked like the smaller guy, even though Barthelemy was a champ at 130 moving up. Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's right. that short, stocky guy yeah. like yourself uh, at welterweight. But he has some some things, some some good tools that he has the DNA to be a top flight pressure fighter in the sport because you need a great motor. He's got that. He's yeah. got a second and third and a fourth gear. Yeah. He turns it up as the fight goes on. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid to get to get ugly in there, to get to get his chin dirty. To, he, he'll take one to land one mm -hmm. when he needs one. I know Sean, uh, the next the level above that is getting slicker as you come forward. And I yeah. think I think he has the athleticism to do that in the schooling yeah. Yeah. Uh, with his older brother. Yeah. He He's a natural combination puncher working levels with it. Yeah. He, I, told, he, I told him yeah. last night, I said he's a bigger version of Gary Russell. Like they punch in combination, they punch in and finish with power. And I mean, yeah, I'm just I think he, I'm looking I, forward to it. I think Gary was more of like a, a boxer puncher. He's more of a pressure guy. Gary yeah, Antoine yeah, yeah. wants to get in your chest. But, yeah. but with the with the same mentality in terms right. of, I want to put a combination together and then end with the explosion. Yeah. I mean, I saw that from, from Gary when we were kids. Yeah, with that and hook. Then, right? Yeah. And then I saw it from, from, I've been seeing it from the entire family as long as we, I've known them. So the, the, they'll all be good moving forward. And I, I yeah. love what the dad, they, I mean, they play tribute to their dad before and after the fight. But the dad left the foundation, mm -hmm. and you could see it in the family. Mm -hmm. They're still doing it. The the brothers, what, bro, two brothers worked the corner, mm -hmm. 
And you could see even actually, I don't know if a lot of you guys knows that I lost a parent. So I kind of noticed they left the area where the dad used to stand open. And he looked at that area before the fight. Mm -hmm. Like, I got you. Mm -hmm. But it, he left the foundation. He he got it right. These these kids going to be world champions. Yeah. yeah. I think him and Brandon Lee is going to be a, I a seen you fire about, fight one yeah, day. I seen you talk styles, about that. Their style. Styles yeah. make fights. And these two just come to get action. I seen you talk about that. That should be a great fight down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Because yeah. neither one has a title, and yeah. they're both they're in the build-up stage. Yeah, they're still a little young. Well, well, wait. Well, wait. Hopefully, they could make 140 for a while. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. So Let's move forward. Um, we got the heavyweight fight. Yep. Um, Which was kind of... Adam Kanoski, Ali rock Aaron. Em, rock him, sock him. Yeah. What'd you say last night? How old school was it, Sean? Oh, man. I said, <laughs> I said this, ain't, this ain't no 90s, 80s old school <laughs> uh, heavyweight fight. This is... Nine, this is 1700s uh, heavyweight fight where, where guys just didn't have head head movement and it was just whoever clocked who first. Hey, it, I said it, it, it was their there. version of David Tua and Ika Bayabuchi. You remember Damn. that fight? No. Back in, oh, no, no one remembers that. It was, <laughs> yes, they do. A lot a lot of the fans out there, watch the comments that after this. No, they were, that, that was- uh, Everybody at home like, Ika Bayabuchi, I, let me watch that real quick. <laughs> It was go ahead, go ahead. well. I mean, in that fight, it was a little more zip on the punches and a little more concussive power on each shot, which yeah. made it a, a better fight, fought at a higher level. But these these two did go toe to toe for ten rounds. I thought the main difference, guys, was uh, Demirzin was able to withstand the power better. Mm -hmm. Kanaski couldn't keep him off. Uh, whenever whenever Demirzin, who wasn't getting off as often as Kanaski, Kanaski throws and throws and throws and throws and was a little faded <laughs> down the stretch, but. <laughs> When Demirzin, whenever Demirzin would hit him, it would knock that head straight up for the crowd, yeah. the judge to see. And as the fight went on, he just absorbed everything Kanaski threw with no problem. Mm -hmm. really. I, I, yeah, go ahead. Hey, when I first, when the fight first started, I was doing my notes. I said, this guy got the best work rate in boxing. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's like, it's like an amateur. I mean, no disrespect. I'm not, I've never been in the ring. But it's almost like an amateur. He like blows his load early. Like, I'm gonna try to get you out of there. Then after the third round, you can see, see the fatigue. He just starts he starts going down, going down. Defense is not the greatest as it is, but it suffers even more. He never moves his head. It's just like, you know, like he got the little shoulder roll. Shoulder roll. <laughs> he used he to doesn't have the his best head. reflexes, but he and he came he, shoulder in, he came into this this fight lighter. But my man's on a now he's on a losing streak. Where does he go from here? It's tough for him to get well, up. Well, one thing he's got going for him is he's fun to watch. Yeah. You know, if you put him in there, he's going to yeah. come after your guy. He's not going to play it safe. Yeah. You know, so that that helps you. He's going to throw fights. them things. Yeah. But also, he wasn't in there with a bum. A lot of people don't notice. My man has one loss against Akaba. Uh, Ajagba. Yeah. Who, you know, Frank Sanchez outboxed pretty clean. But yeah. Yeah. He's a big, strong guy. And he's on a six, uh, six fight winning streak. What's up? He said Akaba. <laughs> yeah, whatever his name is, you know, <laughs> they ain't F. Africans, you know. F.A. Ajagba. I'm not touch, just leave it alone. I'm not in touch my African side. F.A. Ajagba. <laughs> nice. nice. uh, you can't, you can't, you can't, you won't survive in boxing at the heavyweight division taking punches. Not the way he fights. Not the way he fights. So, that being said, I mean, it's no secret. He's been fighting like that as long as he's been on the big stage. And I even saw him before he was on the big stage. He's got to have more head movement. He's got to bring his hands back when he, once he punches, and he's got to find another way to defend and to leave a lot of the shots that are coming back to him because it's only a matter of time before uh, it catches up to him. But I think he, he counts on it so much because he used to just getting people out of there. And yeah. now he's at the point where people can take the punch. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, ah. Again, that's another part of the game. Um, keep, keep learning and keep growing because if you aren't learning and growing, eventually – you're going to reach this, the, somebody, you're going to be on the same level as somebody. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't learned or anything or improved, that level is where you stay. And I, I do believe that now we, we saw um, uh, Kovnaski get, get here. And I think that that's exactly where he's going to stay. I don't see Kovnaski getting any, going any further in his career. Uh, exciting. Yes. And he's got to be able to put in his next fight, next couple fight, he's got to be able to put somebody on their butt. And get yeah. him out of there because if not, I don't. I just don't see him being able to. That's survive. three losses in a row, man. I give him. I gotta give him props. A lot of guys when they get stopped, he got stopped twice. Yeah. Get yeah. gun shy, yeah. and he he, he was the That's, same Adam Konoski. Yes, you're he got, right. He's got big balls, so yep. uh, huge Polish. 
<laughs> and and you know what? And also to give these guys credit, Sean, how are these? They threw sometimes 70, 80 punches around. Yeah. Big boys. Yeah, big boy. Hey, shout out to the big boys. Sometimes the guys with the six packs can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 yeah, what, weak. What ex- Mindset. What ex- that's, that's what I attribute it to. Mindset and then also, you know, your training and your, and your style. Uh, obviously, we, we've seen Kovnowski at him for a long time. and His style has always been an aggressive. Upwards to almost 100 punches around. I know he, in his fight with... Um, with uh, Charles Martin, was it? No, um, uh, Ariola. They set a record for for yeah. punches in a heavyweight fight. So that's that's who he is, and so you you can't get past Both that. Both of them were big boys, and then they threw all those punches. And then yeah. Demarosian, Demarizian, I think uh, a little bit of it was his offense is his defense, and um, you know, then also seeing that I can hit this dude pretty much whenever I stick my arm out. You know that why would you shy away from throwing a punch? So. I think, uh, you know, that's why we had so much action. Yeah, and i never seen something. I told Sean this. Uh, you know, fatigue is a big problem for Adam. But I noticed, like, second half of the fights, he would come out of the, what would you call that, timeout, whatever, out after getting off the uh, the stool. Yeah. stool. Yeah. Our man come out for 10 seconds and go right back to the ropes. I'm like, come on, my man. Like, yeah, he did that in the ninth. Yeah, yo, you know, that was the one that Because he shot his low for eight yeah, rounds, yeah. throwing 100 punches He went around. straight to the yeah. ropes and just started taking shots. I'm like, man, your like your fatigue is your stamina is pretty bad. Like you got to get some row work in. I mean, but he did throw like 700 punches before yeah, that moment. You, you better punch <laughs> while you. Is, isn't that why y'all punch while y'all running? <laughs> What's that for? Not everybody does that. Really? Just, just that's something my dad started. Hey, why you, was Sugar it, Ray Robinson back in the day punching at the air, like up in the sky when he was running? Yeah, all the old school fighters punch, punching out when, when they no, running. No, 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 not like that. Sometimes yeah. they would even like yeah. they do this like they jab. Upwards. I, so yeah. what I what we did now, my dad, we would use weights and we would go like that. And that just fatigues the deltoid. You know, you fatigue it and then it strengthens it. And, okay. you know, fight night, it's, you're strong. Mm-hmm. You t- well, tell him to come train with uh, Kenny Porter. I can't tell him. Kenny, Kenny Porter going to put him on, on the track with the gloves on. Kenny Porter going to say, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Oh yeah, he gonna be real. He yeah. go, he really gonna be real about it. Like, yeah, you know, I it. can't do nothing with you. you. Know it. I can't you know do nothing it. with you. What you, you want me to it. do? You should came ten fights ago. <laughs> uh, the main event: Eddie oh, Garcia, man. Jose Benavidez. Did, did this? Did. Hey, hey, first off, man. Hey, shout out to the Benavidez family. You know, we got all respect for your David, the dad, yeah. the whole camp. Hey, Jose has been very disrespectful. You know, to my guy Sean, yeah. to the welterweight division. Which was basically held for uh, what carried by Garcia, Thurman, Porter, and Spence for damn near a decade after Floyd and Manny kind of pulled back. So for you to have so much disrespect for a warrior like Sean Porter, yeah. bro, my man's two times world champ. The best thing you ever did was went twelve with Crawford and got knocked out. Mm. The, I mean, you you should have. I never been in the ring, but you should have respect for a warrior when you've been in the ring like a warrior. Was there history there? Did you guys ever, you know, get heated back at the wild card? Because yeah, this, this, this is disrespect was just real this week. What I what I would guess, what I would venture to say, like, imagine you go to high school with somebody and y'all are like in the same classes and y'all doing the same things, whatever, and you have plans after high school. You, you tell you my plans, you tell me your plans, and somehow, some way, we have the same plan. All right, cool, man. I hope you do it. And as soon as I turn I'm my well back, champion. no way, I'm gonna be. <laughs> as soon as I turn my back, I'm gonna get there first. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I'm gonna beat him to it. There was never a conversation or anything like that had between he and I. But I think that that sparring that's on YouTube and all that kind of stuff, I think it helped him get the deal that he got, which ended up being a, a raw ass deal yeah. for him and 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 held up his career in a lot of ways. And I think that. There's a lot of heartache that that's come to him from from everything they thought that they were gonna do because they were in the ring with someone like me who had sparred with Manny. Then they went on to spar with Manny. All of these things, I think they had high expectations based on one sparring session, and then once that expectation wasn't met, I think that there's some hardness created there from the one person that was your your high school friend that you said, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna get there first, and then it doesn't happen for you. You're looking back at that dude like what and you know there's just some some hardness there you know what I mean there's some there's some you know there's some tension there and I I got to that's just my 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 impression that's just what I think 
You um, have a great relationship with David and the dad. I'm 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 good with David. I mean, I haven't seen Jose in in, in That's forever. why I understand what was, was so much tension behind. Like why? But but when we so when we talk about the boxing game, don't forget that if if I don't say your name, ain't nobody gonna look at me. Okay. You know what I mean? So you you he's saying things so that people will look at him. And I'm not saying that, that I'm not saying he doesn't mean what he says. I'm mm-hmm. just saying that he knows that I gotta say in, in order for me to be acknowledged in the room. I got to make sure I'm I'm poking at the people that are in the room. If I'm not poking at them, then then who's going to care about me? You know, so I got a feeling that's what it is. But I mean, to your point, if, if you didn't get where I got and and there is some envy or anything like that at all, just say that. Don't don't put me down and and, and make it seem yeah. as if I'm not who who I've who I've been because I I am who who I've been. I proved that. You know, so I I don't know. I think that um. I think that he he's he had a very high expectation for himself, and I think that it started with this fight with Danny Garcia in terms of where he was going to go. Now well, he was like at sixteen, the youngest national Golden Gloves champion in the history of the. And at first. seventeen, so he had a, seventeen, the first yeah. one to get a box, the youngest to get a boxing license from Nevada State right. of Nevada. Right. So the t- they the expectations on him was high. Right. I let me say this. I and I did not see him as an amateur, but I don't feel like he was a phenom. And they kept saying that on the on the telecast last night. I don't feel like he was a phenom. Some, some people did. Well, yeah, but not a, you, some people some did. Some people did. Yeah. But if you're a phenom like Roy Jones was, mm-hmm. you would have done it the way Roy Jones did it. Mm-hmm. If you're if you if you were a phenom the way SOG was, you mm-hmm. would have did it the way SOG did it. If you're a phenom, and, and of course, but at the end of the day, you're not saying you was a phenom in the amateur. No, not, not so, at all. all right, yeah. But but at the end of the day, if you're a phenom, and of course, you have the right people in front that can direct you and things like that, you do everything that a phenom is supposed to do. And I I know that he, there was a lot that went on for him, so on and so forth. But I just from what I remember from us sparring, and then from what I remember from from him as a as a as a fighter in general, before the 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 the, the shooting accident. And and I think that uh, the 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 um the contract that he had, I mm-hmm. think that that did a lot to to him as well. But I just didn't see phenom out of him. I saw a very good boxer out of him, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I just kept hearing that last night. I'm like, I don't know where y'all got the facts, but I just don't think he was a phenom. I mean, getting a license is just that's getting approval. Like you know, just, you you contact the right people, and you, you know, you end up with a license in Las Vegas. I mean, there's nothing. Beyond making sure the right people are in place to make sure that you get your license, there's nothing beyond that. So, um, on to on to Danny. Like but I he just, was, you know, at that age, he was he was long, yeah, fast, yeah, really fast. He was he was all of that. But in, in I mean, there's reflexes. a lot of there's a lot of guys that I've seen who are really good. I never like I I swear up and down like Andre Durrell and Anthony Durrell. Like I looked up to them. They weren't to me. They weren't phenoms. They were like extremely talented. Yeah, Andre Durrell's. Like when you pull out the word phenom, there's just something and and usually when you pull out the word phenom, like that person becomes mm-hmm. all of that. And then if they don't, you know what I mean, cuz we've seen it in basketball, we've seen it in football where those phenoms just don't pan out. I think this is this obviously is that same situation. So when you use the word phenom, did you did you put too much on it, you mm-hmm. know? So, and I wish that man the best in his career. I just have to address it. You coming at mine, I'm gonna come at you. Yeah. Hey, he he never has lacked for heart in in machismo. Yeah, he's he's got a lot of machismo. But, but sure. you just got yeah. at the end of the day, you guys have a certain amount of respect for each other outside the ring. I just felt like he didn't have a certain amount of respect for certain people. Yeah, he he looked at Danny Garcia like he was a pushover. He's saying you lost to Sean Porter. Sean Porter was a bum. Come on, man. Yeah, come on. <laughs> he's selling and he's selling the fight. You know what I mean? Like, I get I get everything, and I like I feel like we've attacked him. Yeah, and I don't I don't want to attack anybody yeah, ever. Yeah. Um, I just it's two fights in a row now that he didn't really. There's, there's a vulnerability to him as a human being that I see, like for sure. the, despite the tattoos and the machismo, and he'll taunt the guys when they're coming on, and he talks a, a good shit to sell the fights. I, yeah. I think there's a there's there's another side we don't see from Jose Benavides. There's a vulnerability there. We'll, all of that. we'll get to it, but yeah. I think Danny spoke on it very eloquently right, right, last Danny, night. You right, know what let I mean? it out. Let that yeah. side out for the whole world to see. That was and beautiful. I thought I I didn't expect that, and no. I mean I just felt like there were a lot of surprises from Danny last night. Hey, I, 
Best performance I ever seen from Danny. How many times did I rewind it during the first Danny round? Danny Garcia. How many times did yeah, I, I rewind the first Matisse. round? I didn't understand what the hell you were doing. He <laughs> kept playing Danny. If you're watching this, Sean Porter <laughs> came to my house, watched the fight. He watched it, rewind it. Watched it, rewind it. I, I'd already seen the fight. I stopped watching. Yeah. I don't know how many times he kept, he kept rewinding. Rewind. <laughs> I said, I'm done with this. I just re I rewound the first round just a couple of times. That wasn't the entire first round. I needed to see when the fight starts, where are you? Who, who are you? What are you? What are you trying to do? And I had to make sure that he was establishing control. I had to make sure he had the game plan. I looked at you. I said, yo, this is the first time uh, I've seen Danny with a game plan, right. like beyond, you know, what he's been known <laughs> for, which is a counter punch yeah. and a big hook. Um, I saw a game plan. I saw comfort. I saw comfort. I mean, I could go on and on. I ain't even my, finished the fight. My did man I? was busy. I, I ain't even finished the fight, did I? No, no. Because <laughs> I was. No. And I was, then you rewind the end of a, a round. <laughs> he got something off. Yeah, a jab and got out of there and got back. I said, Sean was so hyped. <laughs> I hey, said, Danny, you got a fan in Sean Porter. <laughs> because I told y'all, <laughs> I said I'm looking forward to Danny Garcia at 154. I, I got a feeling that we're gonna see a comfortable, uh, comfort, uh, confident Danny Garcia. I felt like we saw all of that. And I felt like they really prepared for this fight. Whatever you did for this fight, like, and you're, you're going to keep fighting because you said you're a fighter. I believe it. Keep doing whatever it was that you did to get in the ring last night. Keep, keep doing that because I was, like, beyond impressed. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that double jab. People, sometimes he tripled it up. Yeah. He would just touch up top to get Benavides to put his hands up and then stab the body. Stab the, I mean, he landed that shot, like, 100 times. Uh, he showed us all the different looks he's capable of. Sometimes he shoulder rolled. Sometimes he caught. He just put the hands up and, and I mean, immediately shoot off the catch. He would just catch, catch, and, and shoe shine to the body. Great body attack. Jab. Boy, you was looking Those, old school in there last night. You was looking old look, school. Look, hey, Sean was hype. And, hey. that, and that nice step around movement, not excessive. Yeah. Just well, stepping around, just stepping enough. around. Right. And he got comfortable early. And all this taunting and stuff. Danny wasn't worried about that shit. He got, he got it comfortable early. It was just a, like, it was a new Danny. Uh, with the movement, with the movement, the body work, the work rate. Shout out to the my work rate. rate. I, I, uh, I, I got to go back and check, but I, I have a feeling that was the most punches he had ever thrown in a 12-round fight. Bro, he was just tagging his ass. Shout out to my boy, Rene Shake Ortiz. Springy. Oh, oh God. My boy was springy oh, last God. night. Had some pep in his step. The hand speed was noticeable. Mm -hmm. Now, now when you're not fighting these lightning quick forty and forty seven pounders, you're you now we can appreciate your quickness and your <laughs> yeah. hand speed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He looked great last night, man. I had yeah. I, I had really no complaints. Uh, obviously, Styles make fights. I, like I said, they they prepared to the T for Jose Benavidez. They were a step ahead of him, um, a complete step ahead of David Ben. Or excuse me, Jose Benavidez from beginning to end. Um, I there were really no surprises. Uh, he he from, took him to school from when Jose's you, side. Yeah, one thing I noticed when a when the other fighter is talking and taunting the whole fight, usually you're going to school. Yeah, it, it was a lot of taunting. <laughs> he, he reminds me of David, uh, a baby version of David when he's actually the big brother. But he reminds me of David, but he don't let his hands go like David. David will taunt you and then tax your ass. It just wasn't. He's this was only his. Uh, third fight in four years it's hard to get your conditioning right yeah too when you're you know not fighting often yeah yeah. I mean, yeah but you could see you could see david in him you could tell they're brothers and that, yeah oh yeah they, they both got that heart and, yeah and the excitement but danny he he always has had like people would try to say he's flat-footed but he's always had good quick feet fighting off the back foot or moving side to side it's more when he has to go forward and and mm -hmm. cut the ring off um and, and and we and I guess to, to be on the other side of the coin, we've said all the positives. I still don't think he's going to become the champion at 54. I don't think he beats Jamel Charlo. I think the best style matchup for him at 54 with the tops was Tim Zhu because Tim Zhu's 5'8". Tim Zhu's not a big guy. Uh, I, and Tim Zhu has the style, like Benavides. he's going to come to Danny and give Danny a chance to fight in the style he's most comfortable with, especially this weight where he wants to box instead of be go after. I, the guy. I will. I mean, this is a crazy one. I love to see Danny in front door just to just to see the shit. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be honest. Just just for a fan of boxing. How the hell are you gonna work? But because he's coming forward, what are you gonna do? Like Danny, that fight ain't for Danny. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's a bad. It's a bad it's too style. Big and too I'm young. a fan. I said for a boxing fan, for not for Danny Garcia. Danny's. I, He'll, he'll he'll tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Danny's ever been in the guy in the ring with a guy as big as Fondora. 
No yeah. one Danny size has ever been in the ring with someone as big as Fundora. I have. Well, yeah. I, mean, I, always I know. I just going to bring you up. Well, no, but you, that was at yeah. 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Out, out of 54. Yeah. 47. So. I'm just I'm I'm not sure like if they know how to even like prepare for yeah, like, a big guy like that. But last night he called out Keith Thurman. I, Keith I Thurman. Lo- I love that. Keith he Thurman out- respond. Keith. What do we think? I love that. Well, I, I love that fight at fifty four. Hey, I think he gets to Keith. So you think it's a case where because sometimes give me give, mess around and give me height. I think he get Keith. What you think? I think he gets Keith. Sometimes they say when a guy loses a half step you get a, a more exciting fight than when two guys are all the way in their prime because they're harder to hit. And mm-hmm. Because the first time around, it wasn't a great fight. It got off to a hot start yeah, and, and fizzled yeah, out right. a little bit. So I, I'm more like, I'd rather see him fight Lara at 55 because it's something new. And it's a chance for him to grab a belt in a new division. I've seen him and Keith when they were in their primes. I, yeah. I don't need to see it again. Keith but. talked that talk, but Keith ain't the Keith that beat Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. Let me tell you this. We just saw from Danny. Moving up to 154 would be beneficial for Keith Thurman. You, you, think, you think we get old Keith back? He going to grow, grow we, the hair we out? Get a, we, get a, we get a, 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 <laughs> we don't get old Keith, but we get like a, we get, get, we get a fresher Keith. We get a fresher Keith than we've gotten at, at 47. He's, it, it, hey, it's, let, me, let me, let me cut you off here. Don't we get no fucking ideas. No, 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 everybody no, no, going no. to 54. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, me and Sean Porter at 54. It's a lot, okay? You getting hyped over here. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I see the vein in my guys. Head. It's my guys. <laughs> But, hey, listen, I got to say this. Um, Danny, with his, as impressive, as good, as comfortable as, as he looked last night, get back in the ring. Yeah, don't there's, take yeah. There's no need for four months, five months to go by without you getting back in the ring. And I remember we were talking about this a little while ago. I never said Brian Kenny's name, but I was saying that someone had mentioned this was a while ago. I don't even know what episode it was, but and I'll just go ahead and just say it again. So I had a conversation with Brian Kenny one day. This was after I had fought for Miller and before Terrence Crawford was announced. Hey, when you getting back in the ring? I said, I'm not sure yet. I knew what, what was in my head and what was on my mind, what I wanted to do. He said, Why don't you why don't you guys just fight? He said, That's how boxing used to be. Guys used to just get in the ring and fight. You guys just gotta get in the ring and fight. That's what you need to do. You need to let the public, the public just needs to see you. He said, there's nothing wrong with you not fighting a guy that's who's at Sean, the top. That's how I tell Phil. About what? If I just fight? I mean, I think that's how all fans feel, but I'm, I've been around long enough to understand the new, like, yeah. the business it's not that and all easy that. Yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. But go ahead, He, he said, he said there's, yeah, nothing, that is essentially there's nothing wrong with you fighting uh, guys that aren't on your level. He said, look at you. You fought for, for uh, so, uh, Sebastian <laughs> for Mello. Everybody tuned into that. Everybody yeah. loved that fight. They loved to see you. They weren't there to see Sebastian. They wanted to see you. He said, sure. if you guys get in the ring... People will watch the fights because they know who you are Mm -hmm. and you'll have an opportunity to get more fans. He said, back in the day, guys were fighting five, six, seven times a year. You guys were fighting what? Two? Two times? If that. If that. (laughs) He says, he says, you guys have to be busier in order to get the fans to, to, uh, to, to acknowledge you and to really roll with you and want to see you more. All that being said, Danny, don't take too long to get back in the ring. Don't feel you like, wanted Keith back in the ring by this time. I want to. I want Sean, Keith back Sean, in the ring. I was about to say you said this exact same thing to Keith Thurman yeah. after his fight. There's no because it, it depends on like what you want out of the sport and what and what what you what your like what your what, what your plan is. Mm-hmm. My plan after for for, uh, for Mella was Crawford or nobody. Like it was Crawford or I'm pretty uh, much. Earl? I was like Crawford or I'm going to retire because oh. I I don't want to fight Earl again. Him? Oh, and then I I. The thoughts of fighting Keith had come back, you know, yeah. things like that. But for the most part, it was Terrence or nothing. But I was I was listening to Brian. I was like, yo, that make a lot of sense. And then I was like, no, but you can't do that. Like, stick to your plan. Danny said last night, I'm a fighter. This is what I love to do. This is what I want to do. Get back in the ring. Don't, don't aim at names. Aim at guys that are going to, people are going to come to watch you fight. And don't worry about the names right now. Get a couple of more fights at 54. Get comfortable at 54. Let everybody see you be great at 54 the way I saw last night. Uh, Tony Harrison next. Yeah, That'll be a great fight. Get people interested in you at 54. Don't, 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 don't like put yourself like at risk or anything like that so quickly at 54. Like just enjoy your career and get some more fights on your belt. We're, we're, we're almost in August. Yeah. I want to see you back in the ring at, at October at the latest. Damn. Sometime, sometime in October, you didn't take any punishment. 
Yeah. You got you got a lot of momentum on your side. Whatever you did in training, like don't let all that training go to waste because you want a vacation now because you got paid. Now it's not the time to vacation. I didn't I didn't vacation in between a lot of my fights because I was like I got I got things to do. You know what I mean? Don't vacation. Get back in the ring. Get back in the ring. Get back in the ring and let everybody see you be great. Yeah, yeah he that was the Lucas Matisse boxing that we saw. Yeah. That was the best he had boxed. Yeah, since Lucas Matisse. I like. I know I'm you tight. mentioned. Tony Harrison, I like the Tim Zhu Castaño fights for him because mm -hmm. they're short 154s and they come at Danny, mm -hmm. allow him to fight in the way he feels most comfortable mm -hmm. these days. If he mm -hmm. fights Tony, Tony's 6'1", and he's going to fight going backwards. Mm -hmm. Dan, That's never been Danny's game, cutting the ring off and going and getting you. So I, 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 I like I won't be mad at Laura either. And, well, see, Laura, that would have been a nightmare style six, seven years ago, yeah. but he doesn't move as much yeah, as he yeah. used to. So that's a better fight now. For Car Danny. I mean, Carson will pick Laura if he was here. So <laughs> I mean, Laura's shown the power to knock out middleweights. And Danny that, started that is a it. tough fight for Danny. Yeah, a very tough fight. Yeah, tough I mean, all these Danny. fights going to be tough. Who? I mean, you can't go back. No, you can't go back. If you want to get to Charlo, you got to go forward. So you yeah. got to go through them guys to get to Charlo. Yeah. So we can't have you fighting a tune up. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not saying fight a uh bus driver, yeah. but at the same time, there's no need for Charlo right now. Yeah, exactly. Um He's even if you're anyways. talking about yeah, even if you're talking about a fight with Keith, like Keith, get back in the ring, get back in the ring at fifty four and 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 build that fight. You know I got mean? one for y'all. Brian Castano. Yeah, that's, he that's said it already. Oh, I, look, I do like right. that one though. I do like that right, one. It was coming right. back no, no, because I, like I did one. that to you earlier in the show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it, it was coming back. I do like that one though. No, I'm hype. I'm hype. That's a really good that's fight. A, the was where's he from? Argentina, Sean Porter. Argentina. <laughs> that's a really good fight. But so then that leaves us now upcoming weekend this Saturday. I, well, do we start with Hasim Rahman Jr.'s fight being called off with Jake Paul? Or do we go to Virgil Ortiz and Michael McKinson? Uh, where do you guys want to begin first? Uh, let's go with Virgil. Get that out the way. Well, I think he should win this fight by by a stoppage. Because Michael McK and, and it's a good fight for him because Michael McKinson is a savvy southpaw and he's rangy. That's what he brings to the table. He's a rangy, kind of savvy southpaw. And all the best guys in the division for Virgil are boots switches from southpaw to orthodox. And Spence and Crawford are southpaws. Crawford switches mm -hmm. too, but he fights most of his rounds as a southpaw. And so it's a it, like I was saying. Ryan Garcia needs that JoJo Diaz fight to help season him for a, a tough southpaw in Tank Davis. Mm -hmm. This helps, not as much as I think JoJo would help Ryan, but this helps because this guy does some of the things, uh, he, he, I guess you could say he does some of the things a, a Boots or a Crawford might present in that he's rangy, southpaw. He just doesn't have the, dyna the he's not as dynamic as those guys. He's yeah. not the puncher those guys are. He's yeah. not as athletic as those guys. Yeah. But it, it, it isn't a meaningless fight for Virgil's development. This should help him get some looks because the style McKinson has can sometimes take advantage of a straight up and down, busy pressure fighter like Virgil. And so that this should help Virgil uh, improve. But McKinson, he has leaks in his defense, holes in his defense when he opens up, and he's a one or two punch fighter. Mm -hmm. So Ortiz, I, I think he'd be best suited turning the pace up, turning the volume up more and more as the fight goes on. Yeah. Punch when the other guy's punching. And I, I think he should get him out of there in 10 rounds mm. for Virgil. Who I, and I really like Virgil. And both undefeated fighters, but Mike only got two knockouts. Right. Virgil got 18 of his 18 victories. And I see it being 19 of 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Styles so, make fights. Mm -hmm. So the record and everything looks good on, on paper, but it might not be getting you ready for the Terrence Crawfords, so Earl just, Spence of the world. Well. Yet. But it is, but it's a step in that it, direction because he's rangy yeah. and he's and he's a little savvy and he's under yeah. He's heading southpaw. north. Yeah. He's heading north. Yeah. I still really wish he could have got Rashidi Ellis ah. uh, before he <laughs> left Golden Boy. You, you've been pushing that forever. Yeah, well he yeah, needed he yeah. needed a look at that speed, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, before he fights at Ennis or a Crawford. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Who, who's at one forty seven in the zone? Oh, is it one forty seven? Rocha. Yeah. Ro oh, okay. Yeah. But that that that's Virgil won't be uncomfortable with that kind of style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll do he'll do his thing. Mm -hmm. It's levels there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then, and then and then also in Golden Boy news, uh, Estrada gets away from De La Hoya, signs with Top Rank. Yeah, that yeah, made I've me a little that. sad because Oscars from East LA, Sinesias from East LA. You'd hope they could have built something in that market, and uh, but they go their separate ways. That's a good look for Top Rank because Estrada's marketable, and she's one of the best fighters in the world. So so that's there. Um, and then what, what, moving on to Rachman and 
Rock. And Jake Paul. What do you think, Sean? Jake Paul. I'm salty. Sean Porter. Apparently you predicted it. Yeah, Sean Porter predicted this two weeks ago. Right. I'm so, I'm, you know, people say, oh, man, you spoke that into existence. Ain't my fault. Hey, can we play that clip real quick? Let's do it. Sean Porter always Let's talking. say not, Hase, Haseem Rachman and his, and his camp are like, they, they, they understand that he's trying to get us to suck ourselves down. We're only going to go here. Mm. They'll massage it. Jake Paul, they'll massage it. They'll they'll cancel the fight and they'll massage it and make it all Hasim's fault. And they won't take the rap for anything. You know what I mean? Like he's he really has a way of doing this so that he's kind of like covered all of the bases. You know what I mean? So even if you take a look at the rehydration clause, he's covering all of his bases. You know what I mean? So let's say not You wanna pop your collar, Sean? No, I'm not gonna pop my collar. You be talking oh. that talk, don't you? You you know what you you you, you, you know this game. I be having a little fun. late '90s usher. Pop I, be, the collar. I be having fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> I be having fun with it. I was not ready for that when he said that. It's a bad song. No, I'm salty because I felt like we had something good coming. We was hyped about this yeah. week. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. We, and by we, I mean the Puerto too Way good podcast. to be true. Yeah, Shot. the boxing world. Yeah, Puerto Way podcast was hype. We yeah. we was gonna do something with this. We week. was on our way to New York. You know yeah. what I was hyped about. Win or lose, one thing I was sure of, he was going to land his jab from the opening bell, mm -hmm. rock. And I just wanted to see how Jake could deal with that. Would he, would Jake, to, when he had his first fight with the headgear on and everything, and he fought a guy who's not a boxer, but he actually fought through a bloody nose in England and wound up getting a knockout. So Jake's shown some grit at whatever level of boxing that was, but he's shown that grit. But I wanted to see how he was going to react to eating a jab. He's basically been hit with one real good shot in his pro fights. It was a right hand by Woodley halfway through their first fight. But Jake was going to touch him up a dozen times with that jab. And I just wanted to see how he was going to uh, react. Ha Haseem. Yeah, yeah. He was going to eat a lot of jabs from Hasim. That's yeah. his best punch. And we never got there, you know. But uh, Jake Paul and his team, y'all outsmarted yourselves. You tried to get in the ring with somebody that you felt you had some success with in, in, in sparring. You felt like this is the guy that's going to be the first boxer that, that we, you know, true fight boxer that we get in the ring with. And if it's not enough that he just lost on knockout, and it's not enough that uh, we know that he, he doesn't prepare the way that we prepare for a fight, we're going to make sure that he is, has every deficit in the world uh, on fight night. And so you, you, you grab a guy from the heavyweight division. And that's if he even takes the offer because we're going to offer him something pretty low compared yeah. to him. Well, yeah. And you take a guy in the heavyweight division that, that's got a name and, and, you, and you want this guy to act like he's a 154-pound fighter or 147-pound fighter and lose 15 pounds and what, two weeks, two and a half weeks before the fight. I never thought about that. And while I was excited for Rock and while I was crossing my fingers and hoping that Rock could pull it off, right there you saw in the video that I wasn't convinced. Why am I not convinced? Because this man basically has never had to make weight. Even as an amateur when he did make weight, what, what do you think Rock was being told? Look at your dad. You're going to be a heavyweight someday. When you eat what you want to eat because eventually you won't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Well, he was headed for heavyweight at 14, 15. That's what I'm old. saying yeah. to you right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, he was exactly. he was headed to heavyweight. I think he was a heavyweight at even, 15 years old. Even when he <laughs> had to make a weight class, right. it was like, okay, cool, we're gonna do this until we get big and we get we get to be where where your dad is. Cause you'll be there one day. This man has never had to lose weight, Jake. This man has never had to get a nutritionist and and be so professional and so so uh, pinpoint accurate from a weight uh, standpoint. But you thought that this was the guy because of the name and because he had just got knocked out and because we're going to make him suck down and we'll make, make sure that he's weak on fight night and, and, we'll, and we'll make sure that we look good. You outthought yourself. And I lost money because of it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. For the way podcast definitely lost some money on this one. Here's the thing. Jake and and I and I and and I salute him for what he's done in the boxing game. It's hard to come in here and make these kind of business moves in a sport that doesn't like anything new. As you can see, I mean, I would say 75% of the boxing world is still putting their fingers up at Jake Paul saying he's not a real fighter. 
but he's making moves like a real fighter. He's doing things like a real fighter. Making more he's money a, than real fighters. He's promoting that, himself and, and yep. all those types of things. But getting money. In this, in, this, in this one, you outthought yourself. So you got to go back to the drawing board. You got to find somebody that's closer to your weight that you can make this happen with. It's not going to happen with a heavyweight because no heavyweight knows how to lose weight. So, so cancel that. Cancel uh, Hasim Rahman. Unless y'all want to go back to the table and, and revamp this contract and do something like 208. I think 208 is reasonable. I think I think I, I felt like 205 was reasonable, but I think 208, 208, that's when you can expect Rock to be professional and mm -hmm. do what he needs to do to get there. But moving forward, now you got to rethink this process. If you're Jake Paul, you got to find somebody around that 175 to that 180 uh, that is... If you're going for a boxer, you got to find somebody that, that's a boxer. But I think you're kind of coming up to the end of those guys that either have the name, that risk and reward situation that you that, that he's dealing with because he's 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 learned the game and he knows that there's that risk and that reward. You're coming up to the bottom line. And it's not too many that you can pick from. Well, so, risk reward. This this was a, a very legitimate risk. This it was is. the legitimate yeah, one. This but, is the one. Yeah. But. Coming out of the gate, you should have looked at it and said, "This guy, this man is two twenty. Uh, he doesn't know how to lose weight. So where can we, where can we pull him to? But, but somewhere he, that we know he can get to. So let's, uh, let's. You should have started at two hundred five and then maybe worked your way up to two hundred eight because that's still you're still pulling this man not just physically but he mentally, emotionally, the whole nine. He still would have been at a deficit, not the deficit of two hundred that you were expecting and, and that you would look great. But then guess what? Now you're putting yourself in the position that all of us boxers put ourselves in. You're challenging yourself. You challenged Rock to do all that. Now challenge yourself to beat this man that that you you you're forcing all of these different incentives on. So you you Jake, you, you gotta get ready for a challenge, baby. It's coming. Like you you put yourself in this arena. Hey, mm -hmm. I got I got a name. I got a couple names for him. Okay, Badu Jack, Andrew Tabidi. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you want a name? We'll see, mm -mm. talking risk reward, like Tommy Fury and I. I do, I don't, I, I I don't want to see that shit because I know that's what we're going to get. I don't want to see that shit. Go ahead. My bad. Because Hasim Rahman Jr., I think is very well. I think he is definitely a, a bigger risk in the boxing ring than Conor McGregor, who presents 10 times the award. And, yeah. uh, you know, and Jake, he's done something a lot of people that like myself, you know, who just sit and watch fights. He went out there and did it. So, you know, he. he I understand the whole energy of, you know, just just shut up and stop hating while I'm doing things you literally wish you could do as you sit there. And mm -hmm. I, I understand all of that. Mm -hmm. But I want to still have a level head and be fair about this because it's not like he's this guy who's, you know, there, it was potential that with that this would happen, that this would happen with Rockman. It could fall out that it, from people that are experienced like you, that that's the viewpoint you and other people in boxing have taken. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe just like you knew this could happen with Rockman, maybe you knew this could happen with Tommy Fury, that mm -hmm. he has his his connections, maybe or maybe not to the MTK situation and all that. And he wouldn't be able to come to America. Right. So you, it's not like you have this long record in boxing to to force us to give you this benefit of the doubt right. that you that you're above any gamesmanship that could cancel a risky fight like these. Yeah. As you look to preserve yourself for the fights you will win. If you get Conor McGregor in the ring, Jake will beat him in a boxing match, and that's worth a lot of money. So Ooh. do you really risk it all against a Hasim Rahman Jr. when you could fight these MMA guys in the boxing ring and right. beat them for right. more money than you'll make right. uh, for, for Rahman Jr.? But right. the story goes is to be fair to both sides is look Rockman agreed to a contract of 200 pounds mm -hmm. he's not he didn't live up to that contract mm -hmm. he said uh Jake you know tries to frame it that he lost one pound in several weeks but Rock fought at 224 against Kenzie that means he was probably a little above 230 by the time he got the I contract I thought that was bullshit because it, come on bro you know you're lying Go you ahead. you saying <laughs> you you getting word that he's 215 and that the fights moved up to 205 isn't the same, and 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 your team saying that no, nah, this is bullshit. We're not going through. You agree to two hundred. That's not the same thing as Rockman quote pulling out of the fight. Right. That's your side saying no. We're not going to go through with this because of his unprofessionalism. Right. And here's the thing that doesn't look good is, I I, I get it. I get it. He agreed. To, you don't want to fight him at the weight that wasn't agreed to. But you have fought little guys. 
Nate Robinson was 5'8", 5'9". His playing weight was 180 pounds. You made him come up. You had the advantage. Tyron Woodley and Ben Askren were older guys who fought at 170 pounds. You made them come up 20 pounds and, and box. You had the advantage. So, so this time, this guy would have had the advantage. And I understand, and it was a smart move to not go through with that, but there's a few things at play here that Jake, Jake is a master at media and he'd want to pin it all on Rachman and some of it certainly deserves, there's no argument that, that he doesn't deserve blame, yeah. but I think some of it is going to come on him as well. Yeah, I man. think some, some of the casual fans, because that's his whole fan base is casual but fans. That's what I'm trying They're to say. They're just like, the fight's not happening. And that's what and I'm so, trying to yeah. say. If, if you're saying that Rachman is, is unprofessional and, and, and couldn't do what he, what he was expected to do, okay, yeah, he's unprofessional, but he's a heavyweight. He's never had to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So you probably should have did your research and found out like, hey, let me make sure I get you everything you need that you so that you can make this weight. How can I bend? How can we both make this work? He you also know? moved the date. It was supposed to be last the week prior, but it was, was supposed to be this week, supposed to be next Saturday. And he moved it up. He moved the date up. Yeah. So that's another week off. And then there's the issue of he outsmarted don't himself. fighters in MMA and in boxing cut weight, whether you think it's good or not, but in championship level fights. They cut 10 to 15 pounds a day, two days, three days before a fight. Doesn't that happen all the time? That, yeah, that's that, the other thing. I, I feel like he could have made the weight. He would have killed himself, but he could have. But who, so who stepped in and shut it down? Was it the. Uh, there, there's a little bit of he say, she say going on. Because yeah. the last thing Jake Donovan, uh, you know, boxing scene, the last thing reported, not, not a release, a press release from a promotional company was. The New York State Athletic Commission has decided the fight needs to be fought at 205 now because of Rachman's weight. Okay. After that moment, we got a, a press release from MVP Promotions, which said now that and, and this is this is a very bad look for Rock if it was I'm 215 and I don't plan on coming any lower than 215. That's a bad look. You gotta try to he, make that. No, he, he released a statement and said yeah. he was he's they didn't give him one more week. To see how low he could get. But Jake's side is saying, in yeah. fact, he told I, yeah, them, I'm going to wait He said, she said, like you said. And, and hey, I remember the, the late, great Diego Corrales. He was set to have his trilogy with Jose Luis Castillo. And Castillo came in for the second time in a row, four pounds overweight. Corrales got knocked out in the rematch because he made the weight and the other guy didn't. Mm -hmm. And he said, and Corrales would fight anybody. And he said, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not going through with this third fight. He lost out on a million and a half. So... You know, that's a guy, I, I'm not I'm not trying to dog Jake Paul. If the great Chico Corrales isn't going to get in there for four pounds, why should Jake Paul get in there when the guy might outweigh him? I get it, but there's a few things at play. Yeah, So especially, yeah, I mean, I just, the bottom line for me is um, Jake's got to go back to the drum board and find the right guy. I think that they thought they had the right guy, but... You know, you did. You just. Is I don't it a case of this is what you get for trying to suck them down? Like this is a karmic thing. That's kind of what I'm saying. Right. Right. That's kind of what I'm saying. That's kind of what I'm saying. I'm saying you should have known that this was more than likely going to happen. You gotta. You just gotta. You gotta do all your research. You gotta know. You gotta, like I always say, read the room. You gotta know what's going on. What was gonna happen, Sean? August sixth. My honest. Because it seems like we're never gonna know. My honest feelings on on August sixth was that. Rock was was going to be a little distraught with with making the weight. I didn't expect him to come in at 200. I, I thought he might make to 205, that 205, 208 that I keep talking about. Uh, I thought that he was going to get taxed off his ass and they were going to take money from him. And then I thought that he was going to be in, a, in the ring on fight night with this energy of anger and also in, diffused of everything that, he had, because of everything that he had to do to get to the weight class, I thought that Jake Paul would try to move around for for a number of rounds to 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 wait to see if Rock, you know, gas uh, him out. yeah, I thought, thought he was going to try to gas him out. And, um, you know, I really like what you were talking about, about that jab. We really, we saw Rock uh, train a couple of times and I thought that um, what I saw in the training looked really good as well. So I kind of felt like it was, I felt like it was a pick em fight. Even though I feel that Rock is a better boxer, I felt like it was a pick em fight because of the out of ring, out of ring things that were going to pretty much affect Rock's in ring performance. And so I thought it was going to go one or two ways. Either Rock was going to be able to step up and fight through the things that he was feeling, 
or he wouldn't, and then and then Jake would just kind of win on points. I was convinced he was going to get off to a good start because of that jab. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I, I actually think Jake has that tenacity. He showed it in that first fight with the headgear on the, the YouTube fight, <laughs> but, but he showed some, he fought through his nose bleeding. And so I thought, okay, Rox should get off to a good start here. Can he sustain it? Will he, will, because Jake has a good tank and he has that, he's never lost, so he doesn't know how to lose. And will he come over the top of Rock's jab? If Rock gets tired and that jab lazy comes jab. back lazier, mm -hmm. will that counter over the top eventually get him out of there? Yeah. That was the game for me. So I, I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I was convinced that Rock was going to get off to a good start behind his jab. And it was going to get interesting in the second half if he could hold on to his conditioning. Yeah. And I think Jake, win or lose, was going to show heart. Uh, I think he was going to show a willingness to walk through that jab. Not right away. I think he was. I think you're right. He early on, he was probably going to wait for this guy to gas. That's the scouting report. Yeah. But I think he was going to get in there, get his nose in there, and try and land that right hand in the second half of the fight. Yeah, would have been. Uh, I don't know about exciting. I don't know if there would have been a whole lot of punches per round, but it would have been drama. I don't think in that fight. I could have seen Jake been in a position where he had to come off the canvas, where he get put on his ass. Mm -hmm. A Rockman land one big shot. Uh, early, but same thing. I just so much affected it that I had Jake winning. Just so much, yeah, so much affected my man. Yeah, and it just he had no advantages. Yeah, no advantages in this fight, and yeah. I just felt like he could hit him with something early because this is the first time he's in the ring with a boxer. Yeah, you throw something, I counter and hit your ass. Yeah. He's never seen a boxer. Why the hell, if this is his first professional boxing fight, is he getting ranked in WBC? <laughs> Uh, uh, one of the. I mean, we know why, but um, why? Yeah, one of the familiar Twitter guy uh, posters in the, in boxing, Deuce. He he did. He he kind of made a fair point versus where, a guy that's not even ranked in the top twenty. Well, he showed the guy he'd be replacing. I think was eleven and zero, and he's fought those eleven fights in six years, sixteen and zero with six all. He's had only 16 fights in six years, and the the win loss records of the combined opponents way more losses than wins. So. Uh, to, to really try to stretch it for Mauricio, it is maybe the thinnest talent in, in yeah, boxing, the, guy, the division the guy that, of cruiserweight. Why the know? guy that beat Adam last night not ranked in, taking that spot? Right. I, I don't think he should enter the top 15, yeah. but the stretch is, it's it's a thin division. It, 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 in terms of boxing, the number of guys in the division is a lot lower than it is at welterweight or middleweight. Yeah. So it's probably, it might be the easiest division to get in the top 15. What, what weight class is it? Cruiserweight. Oh, cruiserweight. Oh, cruiserweight. Okay. Right. So get your ass up in there with Badu Jack. And but that said, said Mauricio <laughs> saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mauricio <laughs> saw the tweet where, where Jake was like, I made 45 million last year. And he said, honey, how much is 3% of 45 million? <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not touching this. I'm not, I was going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm hey, going to dribble right out of that. Yo, I'm going to st step back. You Counter can't him. Get out basketball. Uh, 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 I can't. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. And he said. What? And said he used to play a, uh, a, a, We are hinting no, in the Jake yeah, Paul was, business. No, was, I was on an AAU basketball team and Sean just did not believe me. It was uh, called Henderson Wolves. I'm dying off. Why? Off the, I was a Dennis Rodman type. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't so score. I was laughing because he but knows how I accurate five that rebounds was. And two blocks. And I'm getting on the floor. Shout out to uh, to Bronny and Bryce uh, James. Shout you wouldn't saw them play basketball. Ty Ty yeah, Lou. how they look. Shout out to Tyron Lou. Tyron Lou. How, 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 how LeBron's kids look. Uh, Bronny is the Bronny. Bronny's solid. Bryce still has some some. He got mature into the game. Tyron. Uh, Coach Lou said. Bryce wouldn't even pick up a ball three or four years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when you 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 catching on late, but you still you you still ready to do it and want to do it. I mean, I think that that says a lot about Bryce. I looked at Lou. I said, uh, so so what you think about Bronny? He says Bronny plays the game right. He said he he plays the game the way you're supposed to play the game. He said you you don't you're not gonna see a lot of highlights from him because he's dishing the ball. He's finding his man. He's finding his people. He's picking, picking and rolling. He plays a lot like his dad. Right. And, I, and I saw that out of him, like in highlights that I had seen before and all those types of things. The younger one, even though he's 6'3", right, he has a power forward swag. He got the Horace Grant glasses. Yeah, yeah, He was yeah, like, yeah. He, he's going to play power forward. Hey, yeah. shout out to Mama James, too. She's LeBron's mom. Mm -hmm. she uh, was... Savannah? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, 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 no right? Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just say no, Mama James. I Leave thought you Mama meant James. Bryce and oh, no, Ronnie's mom. No, no, no. Yeah. No, hey, yeah. yeah, shout out to Mama James. She showed us a lot of love. Big fan of Sean. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So we had we had a good time there. Uh, oh, I, I did want to say this because um, we're looking at LeBron and you're like no, or you're looking at Brian, and you're like no, he's he's not as big as LeBron. He's not 
He's not throwing him down and, you know, all these types of things that LeBron No Wayne gets as big as LeBron. All of, yeah. <laughs> all of those things. But the guy that came to my mind is Larry Nance. Larry Nance Jr. Uh, um, okay. He could jump. It, we just seen that guy. Yeah, Larry Nance could jump and then Larry His Nance Jr. Could, Ju- could, could, could jump too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jr. could jump too. But Jr.'s not a guy like, you're, he's not a highlight reel guy. But he he hits his really? mark. He hits his marks. He knows where where to be. All those type of things. He just knows basketball. And so a guy like Bronny too, who are at now right now is in the highlight reel every single game. But he, he's a solid basketball player. I'm sure eventually he can get on any NBA team and be a, a big contributor because he knows how to play the game. You know. Hey, shout out to LeBron. He hey, you move your family right. Absolutely. Hey, that's Absolutely. all right, y'all. I ain't going to say too much. Yeah. <laughs> you move your family right. Absolutely. You know, you know Ty Lue's nickname back in the day, right? What was that? Lou, uh, Lou Hefner. Oh, wow. Hey, I, don't, yeah, I don't know why. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't hey, know. Hey, I've heard hey, some good stories. Hey, you messing hey, it up. You messing hey, it up. Yeah, Shout yeah, out to yeah. Tyron, but I was like, hey, you here watching your kids? I ain't got no kids, so. Listen. Oh, wow. See? <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> Hold up. We, we, we going we gonna to end it. Don't too much info. We're yeah. going to end it like this. Uh, after the fight, Danny Garcia really, he kind of opened up and, you know, he really did. He just kind of poured it all out mm-hmm. um, right there live for us all to see it. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, like psychology is like my thing. So I'm sure you guys, you guys know that I have a, a degree, a uh, certification in, in, uh, in life coaching. Oh. And so I had, I had a feeling after I fought Danny that things could like might not be right for him. And so when he when he opens up about everything last night, I was like, I was like, I wasn't surprised to hear the things that he had said. And I don't want what he said to go unrecognized and taken for granted. That being said, because, you know, I, I try to end these things with with a motivational message. He said, uh, Gray asked him, you know, hey, how, how, are, how are you handling these things? Is, is fighting how you do it? He said, yeah, I'm a fighter. And when he said, yeah, I'm a fighter, I said, yeah. That's that's all we can do, because even though you're not on TV, you're going through something. Even though you don't have millions of dollars in the bank, you're going through something. And then guess what? Even those who are on TV every mm-hmm. single night, those who have millions upon mm-hmm. millions upon millions. M- money don't bank, fix problems. Money don't fix problems. No, and they bring about certain new problems that yes. that only people with money get. Yep. Yeah. So I, I wanted to end it like this. First of all, shout out and salute to um danny garcia for doing the best he can to handle his situations um holler at me i'm always here to help my man um beyond that uh anybody that's going through anything i encourage everybody like my dad has always taught me boxing is just like life and i remember i i was i, I went and spoke to some some third graders one time and i said i said believe it or not i was like i'm young in my like speaking engagements i said believe it or not you're all fighters it's like we're you fight because you this and you compete because of that and so on and so forth. I said, now don't hit everybody. Don't hit each other when I leave. <laughs> I said, but I want you guys to understand that you have to compete. You have to fight. You have to have that warrior mentality no matter what it is that you do in life. So for anybody going through anything, you have to fight. And then so I broke, wrote down some quick keys on how to fight. Number one, don't give in to the negative thoughts and the negative energy that comes into your, your mind. And, and comes on you. You have to be positive. You have to stay positive. You combat those thoughts, those energies. You fight with positivity. And then number two, you got to talk. You got to let it out. If you don't let it out, it will eat you up. Whether that's talking to yourself in the mirror, whether that's just talking into the phone and recording it, whether that's, you know, having sit downs, one on one discussions with somebody that can help you, you got to let it out. We saw Danny last night. He let it out. And it was like, I think it was a moment where he was like, he felt free. And I thought it was a beautiful moment. Yeah, he felt free. You know what I mean? And I was proud that he could he could feel free enough to do that so that everybody could could um, re- respect him a little more and uh, and realize some things that, hey, like everybody's going through something. So Yeah, and it's like, he, that's Danny Garcia. He's tough. He's never been dropped in the ring. He's fought the biggest and the baddest. But yeah. here he is crying his eyes out. Like, yeah. it, mm-hmm. you know, it's okay to be a strong man and, and cry and let it out. Yeah. Number three, you need a team. You can't go through it alone. You should have a mom or a dad or a cousin, a great close friend, a wife. Even your kids, I had to tell my aunt last night or last week, I said, your kids are a part of your team. So when you come home, you had a hard day at work, you should be able to look at your kids and speak to your kids and your kids should be able to provide 
energy, emotional management to you. They should be able to cheer you up and make you forget about whatever it was going on. You guys need to get a team, a core group of people that can help you through whatever it is that you're going through. Number four is love. Um, and and just love yourself. And when you can't love yourself, somebody on that team, you got to let them know like, hey, I'm having a hard day. I'm, I'm thinking I'm having bad thoughts about myself. I just, I need you to hear your voice. Pick me up. You need somebody that can love on you when you can't love on yourself. And then number five, identify and separate. You have to identify the issues and then you have to figure out whatever it is that you need to do to separate yourself from those issues so that they aren't weighing you down, so that they aren't bringing about these, these negative emotions and these energies and these things that are going to bring you down and keep you down. I hope you all um, appreciate this motivational message. And um, you guys have a great day. Right, no, 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 uh, we got a live show oh, coming up. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Come on, my, my, my man. We're finally going to go live for we, you guys. We're going long. We've been, this is yeah, a long, gonna, long Yeah, Sean, you know, I ain't want to I ain't want to step in out. on, but <laughs> Get my yeah, we're finally doing a live show. I mean, it's kind of last minute, about a month. We're, we're like a month out. But he tripping on I'm, that. I'm, tripping I'm, on. I'm stressed. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Because I don't know if we started this two months ago. Yeah. Live show, August 21st, Las yeah. Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Take let's, it from there, Sean Porter. Let's do it like this. Um, the Porterway Podcast, we are officially starting our Patreon. Patreon.com. Oh, okay. uh, is it four slash the Porter Way? Yep. T, so it's Porterway. Or excuse me. Excuse me. Let me start over. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash TPWP. That's how you subscribe to our Patreon. Our 100th episode is a big episode. We're going to do this somewhere else. We're not even going to do it here at Blue Wire Studios. We want to thank Blue Wire, of course studios and also the win for having us and hosting us and, and and keeping us in this in this uh beautiful establishment this one we're going to take somewhere else because we want to do something a little different and we want to shake things up we're starting our patreon the patreon is going to be a little bit different we'll give you guys some more but here's the thing you can go to um uh, patreon.com forward slash tpwp to subscribe but if you in las vegas august 21st we're doing a live show at the space. You got the address for the space? I don't got this. We'll put it, we'll put it in the we'll, description. We'll y'all make sure y'all look at the description. We'll be live at the space. We're selling $20 tickets. You can watch us live. They got a big room, sits 185 people. We they got the lights, they got the cameras, they got the action, and we're gonna make it happen. We'll be right giving there. away things. Uh we're gonna have a good time. We'll interact with the fans. You can ask us questions. This is a big deal because it's 100 episodes. So we are gonna have some great guests in studio as well as remotely. So um, we, 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 a lot like uh, you guys had to watch that uh, that New Year's episode that we did. <laughs> we had about four or five different uh, guests on all virtual. And so we're going to try to do something a little, a little bit like that, but definitely much more fresher. Our kicks is going to be a little different. So you can catch us all there. Uh, again, the um, the live episode is August 21st at The Space. We'll have all the information right there for you guys. We hope you guys come out. Um, enjoy. Hold and on. Shout out to Chris, uh, Chick, and Joe. You guys been subscribed for about three or four months now. And we ain't we got shit for y'all. Hey, we ain't done nothing <laughs> for y'all. We got something special coming. This is just for the first three subscribers that's been subscribed. You guys have been holding it down for a couple of months. We got something special coming for you guys. Uh, you guys, you, you, know, you know who you are. So if you've been subscribed, we sent you an email, right? We sent them an email? Hey, man, check your emails, man. We're trying to get in contact with you. We're trying to send you something, bro. You never know. I might pull up at your house like, skirt. He ain't pulling up. No, nah, I ain't pulling up. But no, we, we we thank you guys. We appreciate you for always tuning yeah. in. Um, Showtime, Sean P. I tell um, your boy Carson A. Merck is at Cowabunga Bay. Get, get better, Carson. Yeah. Get better, brother. And my our, our producer. The yeah. handsome and buff. Yeah. Ryan Hayes. Hey, and shout out to DDA. You get, you get this week off. No yeah, stress, man. baby. No stress, And baby. Renee in the studio. Shout out to Renee Ortiz. <laughs> Renee's the type of friend you need when Sean talking about sadness. He'll always be there for you. Much as he get on my nerves, love him to death. He's, he's a springy fella. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's he, a springy he, fella. He, got spring. he can't box, though. <laughs> he's a springy fella. Hey, y'all have a great day.